Okay, so Francis Pottinger was born and raised in Ohio, and he married as a young man a lady by the name of Carrie Bertner. Shortly after their marriage, they discovered that she had contracted tuberculosis. He came to Southern California, and specifically Monrovia, hoping that the change in climate might allow her to recover. I'm trying to remember what he said. I think they may have rented a room from Catherine Wilson. But anyway, the comment was that when they arrested, I think maybe Dr. Pottinger said that when they arrived in Monrovia, there's a beautiful bouquet of flowers in their room as a welcoming. So they were here for a period of time, and Dr. Pottinger went into medical practice with Dr. Let's see. Adams? Yeah, it was Dr. Adams. Because there is a picture showing their medical office on Myrtle Avenue. I don't know how long they were here. Mrs. Pottinger did not recover. So they returned to Ohio where she died. Shortly, not too long after her death, Dr. Pottinger came back to Monrovia, went, resumed his medical practice, and decided, probably because of the death of his wife from TB, to focus on that as his treatment specialty. So he did it without a facility at first, and then in 1903, he opened the first Pottinger Sanitarium in a building he constructed at North Canyon. In terms of location, the address of the facility that I remember was 600 North Canyon. But in terms of its geographical location, I believe it's at the top of the street now there called Shady Oaks, which is a cul-de-sac you drive up, and then at the top is a circle. And I believe the building itself is located about there. So he practiced for a number of years his treatment was sunlight, fresh air, and controlled diet, because of course antibiotics did not exist at that time. I think he provided his patients with dairy products from a dairy he supervised. He may not have had them pasteurized. And I believe that he even supervised the fruits and vegetables that were served them. I don't know what he would have checked on, but I think he also controlled, or at least carefully screened, what his patients ate in terms of what they were ingesting to help them with their recovery. He practiced until probably the 1950s, early 1950s, when he retired. The buildings continued. There was a second building that had been constructed adjacent to the first one, plus many small cottages around, scattered around on the grounds cottages were half enclosure and half screened in. I think the screened in areas, of course, were his, for his patients to either sleep or spend time during the day so they could absorb sunshine and get the fresh air. I remember it when it had become a convalescent facility. I used to deliver prescriptions there for Baker's Pharmacy. Would drive up the old 1949 Plymouth that served as the delivery vehicle and pull into the hospital. Someone would come out and sign for the medications, which I would leave then. Had a drive-through. The two buildings were close together, but there was an open area and you could drive through the, 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 the two buildings. Was it considered contagious and were you at risk in those days? Probably, well, I wasn't because at that time it was just convalescent patients and no, there were no tubercular patients there. It was contagious. Now, my grandmother, my grandfather contracted TB in 1920, December 1920. They spent some time in Northern California, the foothills of the Sierras, hoping that that change in climate would assist him in recovering. And for a while, he was doing much, much better. Unfortunately, he felt good enough to fill in for the pharmacist in Grass Valley needed to take some time off the job and he overdid, had a relapse and never recovered. He came back to Monrovia on the train and they took him off the train on a stretcher. Took him home and he was bedridden for the remainder of his life. My grandmother slept on a cot in the same bedroom. Never came down with TB. She was probably real careful about the 
utensils and plates that she used to serve him food. Now my uncle, my dad's older brother, did contract tuberculosis when he was about 27, which would have been about 12 years after his father died from it. I've never known for sure. I've wondered if possibly he had it latently for a long time, and then it finally changed into a full-blown case after his marriage. The story was he was married in Monrovia, but he married a girl who was from the Antelope Valley. They went back to Palmdale, where my uncle had a job as the pharmacist at the Palmdale Pharmacy. The people of Palmdale threw a chivalry for them, for the newlyweds. And one of the guests at the chivalry walked up to my uncle and gave him a congratulatory slap on the back. And my uncle started coughing and then he brought up blood and realized he had a problem. So he recovered from that case. He had another case. And that time he went to Olive View Sanitarium, which then was the county of Los Angeles' designated area for tuberculosis patients. And he recovered, he was there probably 1939, 1940. And he recovered and was discharged in 1940 and never had a problem again with TB. So were there many other um, places where you could go in, in Monrovia besides the Pottinger Sanitarium? Pottinger's was the largest, but there were a lot of doctors whose specialty was treating tuberculosis, and they would have their own small private sanitariums. For example, Dr. Remington had a large house on North Primrose. He added on a wing to the main house where he could house about two or three patients. Northern end of May Avenue, there were a couple of little cottages originally that were intended for patients to stay who were, who were recovering from tuberculosis. Okay. So Pottinger dealt with tuberculosis through diet and exposure to sun and fresh air. This is Francis Pottinger. Francis, Francis Pottinger, because that was all that was available at that time. Uh, Catherine Decker took over, I don't know if it was an existing facility, but she started out in treating tuberculosis patients in a small house on Norvega Drive. It's still there. Then she moved to the corner of what's now Norumbega and East Greystone and had her own private sanitarium there. I don't know how large it was. I don't think she had a lot of patients. But the Marinol sisters were looking for a location where they could treat patients from Los Angeles, particularly minority patients who would not be accepted as patients elsewhere. So they bought it from Catherine Decker and conducted the tuberculosis sanitarium there for a number of years. Many of their patients were of Japanese ancestry and they accepted them there and treated them. That went on until things like penicillin came along to begin to alleviate the incidence of tuberculosis. At the same time, Potchers began to wind down as a tuberculosis sanitarium and Dr. Potcher himself retired from active practice. His son was also an MD. His focus was the impact of diet on health. He himself suffered from, I think, asthma and was very curious about the origin of asthma and if diet could play a role in alleviating asthma. So he experimented, started out experimenting with cats he would take cats, feed them a controlled diet, and would eliminate certain nutrition from that diet, and then watch to see what happened. And he would write up, to observe and write up, and discover that if you did not have a full, if the cats did not have a full nutrition, succeeding generations degenerated. So that supported his theory that humans who ate 
a diet that was not providing them with the basic nutrients were at risk for de uh, degenerative health issues. About the cats, I was talking with a gentleman who lives in the Canyon Crest area of Monrovia, which is on the west side of Canyon. The properties where Dr. Pottinger Jr. had his medical offices and conducted his research. It might have been a Monrovia gadabouts. Anyway, it was a location where it was a nice venue to field questions in an informal setting. He said, I've got a question for you. And I said, what's that? He said, well, you know, every time I go out in my backyard and dig in my garden, I bring up cat's bones. He said, why is that? And I said, I have an answer. And I explained his home was on the site of the former Pottinger property where Dr. Pottinger did his experiments and buried his experiments. Yeah. So he was Francis Jr. And right. his father was Francis Sr., Senior. is that right? Right. right. And we have a lot of their papers. I guess it's Francis Jr.'s papers. Yes, he right? did a lot, published of, a, lot. a lot of publishing. I don't know how much publishing Sr. did, but he toured and lectured on the treatment of TB. Hmm. He had this demonstration, I think, where he would tap on someone's chest and he could diagnose whether they were tubercular or not from the sound of their chest. At least that's what he claimed. And did we say his name, his partner's name was Adams or Dave? Adams. Adams. Adams that was, right. And that was correct.